Hi, welcome back to another episode of Easy Peasy Labeling with me, Melissa. We are going to pick back up on the Label Editor software series, and today I'm going to show you how to print your first label. So let's dive in. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to do kind of a basic label. So let's go ahead and we'll start getting some stuff on here. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the text. I'm going to drag it over to my label and I'm just going to start typing. Okay, so I'm just going to type in Epson for here. I want to move this up to the top. Um, so you can see I, when it has what I call the blue buttons around it, I can go ahead and just click on the center. I can move it around. Um, I can size it using the text box so I can change the font size this way. Or I can just drag it. If I don't know what point size I want it, but I know what I want it to look like on my label, I can do it that way too. Okay. So you've got different options. It will let you skew them a little bit, but it isn't really going to let you. So I kind of hit a, a break point there where it's not going to let you make really awkward looking letters or anything like that. So um, I think that's nice because nobody wants, you know, some squished together text that you can't read. So that's really nice. All right. So we've got that on our label. Now I want another, um, another line of text. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's go with 26. Sure. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get another piece of text. I want a separate text box here. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to start typing in my next line of text. Now you'll notice I chose to type that in the gray area. And I think this is really helpful because you can use the gray area around your label like a working space. Now this label doesn't have a whole lot on it, but especially when I'm working with more detailed labels or things like that, I like to use the gray area so I'm not messing with the other items on my label already. So again, just kind of a little tip. I find it helpful. Maybe you will too. So I can go ahead and drag this on my label. Now again, it's still set on auto, or excuse me, on a fixed length. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle that over to uh, auto because I want to show you how that works. So as I continue to add things to my label, it's just going to keep making it longer. Okay, and then same thing once I move it back over, it's going to just adjust that. So I really like that feature. Now, I created this as two different text boxes. I certainly could have been here in Epson, next to the Epson, just hit return and got my second line that way. Okay, so you can do that as well. Just hit return, go down to your second line, just like usual. But I wanted to show you some of those layout things that I talked about. So now again, you can see I have the blue buttons around it and I want to highlight both of these text boxes. So you can certainly use your shift key just like you would in Excel or something. I can click on the one and then click on the other to highlight them that way. That's good. The other thing I probably do more is I like to make I usually draw an imaginary box around it so I can highlight as many things as I want. Again, you can do it either way, just a preference. Um, and then let's look at some of those layouts. So now I can go ahead and click on this and you'll see I've got a whole bunch of different op options here. Okay, so this is going to allow me if I do a line middle or a line top or bottom, this is going to allow me to align those two cells with each other. Okay, versus aligning them on the label, for example. Now you'll notice some of these are grayed out. Now, I have my text on auto right now, so the software does not know what the end point is for this label. So it doesn't know what it's centering it with. So a lot of times what I do in this scenario is my labels are random lengths, 2.539. So, and that's fine. That's the length I want it to be. But in order to lay it out, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and hit manual. So I lock that size in. And now you'll see when I go back in there, now I have some more options for centering things. So let's go ahead and center them vertically on the label. You'll see that they adjust it. Okay, good. What else could we do? So I could also align them left, which is going to put them both on the same left hand plane, align them center things like that. Okay. 
Now the one that I don't have on here right now is if you have three or more blocks or cells or different elements on your label, you can distribute them evenly with each other. And that is a really cool feature. Uh, I love some of the stuff that they've added. They've really improved this from the label editor um, professional software that we had previously. So if you're coming from that, there's some nice new features in here that kind of took that a step further. Um, so I want to go back to centered vertically. That's how I want my text to be. Perfect. Okay, so now if I wanted to change this text to a different font or make it bold, you could see that pop up here. Now they're kind of squished, so I'm going to pull that back out. Wonderful. And then again, you can change your text this way. You can align things. Um, you know, I can do different decoration type things. Um, there, I can just bring it back to regular. Um, another really nice feature is this video reverse that is going to make it like a black block. Um, that is really nice if you want to kind of differentiate different parts of your label or make something stand out a little bit more. Um, I like that feature as well. Okay, so now I could do any other things and maybe we want to put a symbol on this label. We could do that. Um, we can do any other things that you want to do to design your label. Okay, if you needed barcodes or QR codes, anything like that, we can certainly do that. Now again, you'll see it didn't make my tape any longer because I had turned it on to manual. So you'll see um, something I do is I kind of toggle between these quite frequently, just toggling between the different uh, manual and, and auto just so I can kind of get the features that I want. Okay, now the other thing I can do is I can use my mouse to move these around, but when you're getting really close and you want to be finite with it, you can also use the keyboard, um, the arrows on your keyboard to move things up, down, left, right. So I like that. Down on the bottom, we also have this zoom which allows you basically to look at the label closer up or further away. This is again really helpful if you're making more detailed labels, things like that, just to be able to see it a little more up close. Okay, so that's that. Now, if I'm ready, um, I can go ahead and push print. So let's do that, let's print a label. So I'm gonna go ahead and click print down here. Now, if I wanted to check my printer settings or anything like that, I can do that. And the main thing that you're gonna do is typically going to be the options tab where I can change my cutter. I feel like that's the one that you're gonna probably do most. So the default is going to be to cut each label separate from each other and then to have the half cut feature, which as you can see from the picture here is going to keep the labels connected on the backing, but they will still be cut separate from each other. That's really nice if you're trying to keep things in order or you want them to be, um, you know, stay in order serialized sequence, or if maybe you're printing a batch of labels to bring to somebody else or take on the job site with you. It's one of my favorite features. Um, so there's a couple other things there um, as well, but for now we're going to go ahead, if I needed to set the number of copies, I can do that. If I needed two of this label, I can certainly set that. And then when I'm ready, I can just push print. All right. I printed two copies, so it's printing. All right. Yay. You just made your first label. Good job. That was a really good overview. I hope you learned something from it. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. There will be more coming, so check back for more videos like this one. Subscribe if you'd like, and we will see you another time. Thanks. Thanks.